What was Jip like before it all got bad? Warm, funny. He was massively talented. He would give people time. He would talk to anyone. Jenny says her life started when she found her partner, Jip Mayo. They met later in life, spent five years together. The last one was the hardest. Everything changed 10 months before he died. That's when it spread to his spine from the beginning of that December. And he died mid, mid October. He died in, in agony, proper agony. Liver cancer first, then bone cancer, then an end which Jenny says she wishes she had any power to change. Did you talk about what he would have preferred or...? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. If there had been a way that I could have helped that was legal, um, we definitely would have done that. We did talk about ways that weren't legal and we had a plan, but the gentleman that he was wouldn't ask. Today, an assisted dying law was proposed to Parliament to allow the terminally ill in England and Wales with six months of life left the right to choose to end their lives. For Jenny, this isn't just something that could have affected her past, but her future too. I found a lump. Found a lump in a shower. Within two years, I had a, a scan that said, actually, it hasn't gone away, and then found that it had spread anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's devastating. I really held it together until the first thought son told me he was getting married and my f the first thought that I'm not going to see my grandchildren. I know that the chances are I'm going to be in an awful lot of pain, uncontrollable pain, potentially. Our law as it stands is unsafe. It doesn't allow any choice. Either I've got to suffer or I've got to break the law. So we moved in about two months ago. This is Miro's first home of his own. Finding somewhere suitable has been a struggle. Miro's fear is that what starts as an assisted dying bill for those with not long left to live could at some stage change into an assisted suicide law for those not terminally ill. It sends a cultural message then that rather than focus on infrastructure for accessible societies and accessible communities, you would rather have a mechanism where your, your death can be uh, facilitated. And do you fear now that the community, that you, will be treated differently, your life will be valued less if this bill goes through? I'm 35 now. There is countless times when I've gone into a space when my health has been quite bad, and one of the first questions is, do you want a do not resuscitate notice placed on, on Miro's notes? I've had situations where doctors assume that it must be awful because when I lie down, I can't lift my head off a pillow and so on. So I'm already facing challenging conversations when trying to emphasise the importance of my life in health conversations. You introduce this mechanism, then it becomes an option that's discussed or an option that is suggested in circumstances. This creates, I think, a really dangerous culture then. Some religious groups are fiercely opposed to the bill. While these protesters gathered in Westminster, a separate law is already under discussion in Scotland and politicians in both Jersey and the Isle of Man have voted to approve plans that could allow assisted dying in future. So I'm very clear this is about terminally ill adults. It's about having different layers of safeguards and protections throughout the process. And also... But you know as well as anyone, laws can change. Going forward, there can be amendments. In years to come, there could be changes that you haven't even thought about now. Well, I can't see what's going to happen in five or ten years' time, but this is about now, and it's about the suffering of these families. Law changes for the politicians. For Jenny, she's just planning for whatever is within her control, like buying her own memorial bench. I want the children to know that they've sat with me here. It's a place to be, to remember the fun that we've had, really. MPs will now debate this fiercely emotive law for six weeks. Labour MPs free to vote with their conscience. A vote about what role society plays in deciding how life ends and what memories we leave those left.
Well, joining me now from Surrey is Rebecca Wilcox. She's the daughter of television presenter Dame Esther Ranson, who has terminal lung cancer. And here in the lead studio with me is Dr Kyrton Skowronski, who's a geriatric and palliative care doctor. Uh, Rebecca Wilcox first. I wonder if you've talked to your mum about today and what it means to her. Yes, I mean, it means so much to us. It's an extraordinary moment and we're so grateful to Kim for bringing this forward because there is a time now that people are accepting that assisted dying can be done safely. There can be layers of protection. We can create legislation that will protect the vulnerable and that will listen to those groups that are worried, but will enable choice for those who want to end their death, to curtail their suffering so that their mm. life doesn't become marred by the memories of a painful, horrible, protracted death, which is what happened with my father. And, you know, you're understandably emotional today. Oh, well, it's been hugely emotional, not least to hear the wonderful Jenny in your VT package, who I talked to early on in my discovery about the assisted dying campaign. She is a force to be reckoned with and what a wonderfully erudite argument for assisted dying. What she would like is no pain. She saw her partner go through pain and she would like the choice. What I would like is people who are of faith and have a reason for their religious beliefs that they don't think that we should end our lives, that there is a sanctity of life. I would like them to come out and say that. I would like them to say, I am a Catholic. I believe in the sanctity of life. That is my choice. Whereas my choice as an agnostic or as someone that believes in a humane way of living, I believe that it is my choice and my mother's choice that they have a calm, peaceful, dignified death. Yeah. I'll come back to the religion point in just a second, but Dr. Kyrton Skowronski, it doesn't seem a lot to ask a calm, peaceful, painless death. And at the moment, as you saw from Jenny in the piece, you know, palliative care just doesn't cut the mustard. Right, no, that's a really important uh, point. Thank you very much uh, for raising it, Cathy. Um, and my deepest sympathy to uh, Jenny and her family, um, and I'm not denying that there are uh, really uh, tragic cases uh, out there, um, but a lot of it, in my experience, having worked with hundreds, if not thousands, of people uh, who've died uh, over the years uh, under my care as a geriatrician and working in palliative care, um, my experience is that um, most deaths um, are actually pain-free, and I think it's actually it's important to dispel any misinformation that this debate brings up. Lots of people assume, because of this debate, that all death is very painful. Um, so most deaths are pain-free. Um, the, the deaths where um, uh, pain is a factor, um, we've got excellent medication to help control that. Um, and yes, there are a few cases, and in my experience I've seen probably three where we've, we've uh, really struggled um, to control um, the pain. Uh, and those, those cases are tragic, but we can do all sorts of right. other things to help support um, the patient. But I'd like to, um, as it, this is such a deeply personal um, debate, I'd like to I mean, raise something from uh, my background, so, um, which uh, I've been thinking about a lot as, as I've been hearing about this bill. So um, my grandmother um, uh, became very unwell and very frail. She was a very selfless person, as uh, many people in that generation uh, are. She was a, a, she was a fan of Esther Ranson's. Um, and um, she uh, would always do everything and always sacrifice herself for everyone around her. And she found it very difficult when she had to move in with us so that we could care for her when right. um, she was nearing the end of her life and she was in the last uh, year of her life. Um, and um, we had so many wonderful moments together, even though there were elements of suffering in there, including um, uh, the birth of my daughter, her great-granddaughter, who she was able to cuddle before she right. died, which she might not have had if this bill had been in place because um, she would have felt she's a burden and it would have been offered to her because she was in the last months of right. her life. Well, it, Rebecca, well, it, you know, Rebecca, there are lots of points to pick up there, but just the point about most deaths being pain-free and, you know, the elderly towards the end of their lives might feel a burden. What's your take on that? My take on that is that my experience, I've, the people that I've met, they have not been pain-free deaths and there has also been the fear of a painful death coming towards mm -hmm. you. Yes, the majority of, the, of deaths within the NHS, within palliative care, um, the doctors that work with people who are in these stages of life are clearly brilliant angels that we should respect. But the fact is there is a limit to what drugs can do and sometimes they just don't work. And 
I know from experience and from reading the report carefully that the Health Select Committee report that came out earlier this year, that so many people with a terminal illness feel calm and a sense of weight lifted off their shoulders, knowing that this is an option, knowing that assisted dying is an option. They don't have to take it up. Again, this is a choice. They can sign up for it and never do it. But just knowing that there is that option, that the, the protracted painful death is not going to happen yeah. to them, irregardless of whether the drugs if, if don't I may, work. If and I may, on the front if, of the vulnerable people. Yeah. No, I just wanted to answer about your about your wonderful um, grandmother, who was a fan of my mother, who would want me to get this point out. I'm not um, bribing you at all with time. But <laughs> basically, vulnerable older people do not have safeguards at the moment. The law is a mess at the moment. There are no well, safeguards the safeguard, in place. Sorry, the safeguard that they do have. Safety. The safeguard that wait, they wait. do have is that yeah. we do not offer them poison in hospital or in hospices. That's a very big safeguard, and our, our society will shift radically. Mm. This is this is a recipe for an absolute disaster. And we can... We've well, got arguably, we've got it's plenty... already happening, though, yes, because people... Plenty... Are, people yes, it's are, already are... happening in Canada, where it's no, been introduced. No, 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 I was making a different point, that assisted dying is already happening... Can I just jump in here? Assisted dying is already happening here, because in theory it's illegal. In practice, people are not being prosecuted. For assisted dying? You know, the people are helping their relatives to well, go. Do doctors are not killing patients in this country. Yeah, but relatives are helping their relatives to go, is my point. But they're not and, being prosecuted, necessarily. And, and, it's and, a mess already. Yeah, it, it, it's a mess, but it's on a much smaller scale than it would be. 15,000 people died last year in Canada from... Um, but we're not medical, talking about Canada medical... here, though, well, are we? I mean, we have to look at the available evidence in all other spheres of medicine, in all other spheres of science. We look, look at, at all the, the available evidence. evidence. I would love you to but, quote the report. <laughs> Could, could you please quote the report? Could you please look at the report which says there is no slippery slope, that vulnerable people Wait, are no, sorry, far more the, protected, the, the, that the disability let, let campaigners... I would love to let you finish, and so could you let me finish? The disability campaigners are 78% in favour of a, di of a law change for assisted dying. The report could not have been clearer. It is evidence fact-based, 14 months of investigation. As a scientist yourself, you must respect data. Yeah, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And the way that um, assisted suicide has snowballed in Canada and the way it's snowballed in Belgium and Holland and is being offered to people who are perfectly physically fit in their 20s just because of mental health problems right. uh, I'm is, really is sorry. very, very clear evidence I'm that really once, sorry. once you let this genie out of the bottle, it cannot be put back in. Dr. Kajan Skoronsky, I'm really sorry we had to leave it there. And Rebecca Wilcox, too. Thank you both very much. Clearly, we could go on for far longer, and I wish we could.